Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Civilization VI. Coming at you with a brand new wonder start. And boy, oh boy, do we have one for you today. I know I always say that. But seriously, today, John Curtin on Uluru, doing Uluru things. Uh, his coastal starts are so strong. I love John Curtin. He is, without a doubt, one of the best civs in the game. And one of my favorite to play. So, here it is. Culture and faith. Now, one thing I did for myself here is I was going to actually start. My original thought was I'll just start my right on the actual tile to settle. And it'll be right on the coast and it'll be so nice. But I thought, you know what? Let's make it a little bit of a challenge on how to negotiate the tiles. Okay, so we wanted the fresh water. So we put in the, uh, the oasis. But how do you negotiate working a, food, a tile that'll give you some food in production or just straight food? Some of these really strong food tiles versus working some of the tiles that don't give you much of that at all. So like two extra faith, two extra culture per turn is huge. But if you're just working tiles like that, you're not growing, you're not producing, and it's going to put you behind in so many other things. So how to balance those things out was a little thing I wanted to put into the twist of this game uh, for you guys. So this is what we're going to do. Do. Why you live with Australia? I know, right? Uh, oh, Ularu. Is it Ularu? Moondoggy? You're Australian. I'll take... Why, if it's Ularu, then why'd they put a U here instead of an, an A? Ularu? 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 I want to say it how the Australians say it, buddy. I don't want to insult anybody's culture. All right? Let's take a quick look at what John Curtin does, by the way. The Citadel of Civilization, 100% production. If they have either received... I'm oh, sorry, plus 100% production. I'm like, what? Plus 100% production. If they have either received a declaration of war or liberated a city-state, in the or any city, in the past 10 turns. So, this is unbelievably powerful. Particularly on deity, because oftentimes you can be afraid of getting attacked by your neighbors. But in this case bring it on because you can literally double your production for 10 turns if anybody attacks you and also if you can position yourself to liberate uh cities or city states then you can also maintain really high production i actually had a game which is on my youtubes where i was going for a science victory and what i did is there was two civilizations that were like this is on the other side of the map that were warring each other in the second half of the game and one of the cities in the middle between the two of them kept flipping back and forth between the two of them depending on who had the higher loyalty and so what would happen is it kept flipping to uh, a free city and then what I would do is I would go in and capture it and liberate it to the people it belonged to and then the other guys would come and take it and then I would liberate it again so I kept a, an army big enough to recapture the city over and over and over and over again every 10 turns I'd be like oh I'm about to lose my 100% production bonus I would go in, liberate the city, give it back to the people who belong to me. I did it like four or five times in a row in the last 50, 60 turns of a game and had double production and did like a turn 195 science victory uh, just by exploiting this one thing. Other things that John Curtin does, which is making him oh so fantastic. The land down under plus three housing in coastal cities. That's incredibly powerful. Pastures trigger a culture bomb. That's a lot of fun. And yields from campuses, commercial hubs, holy sites, and theater squares are plus one in tiles with charming appeal and plus three if breathtaking. That is incredibly powerful. If you can throw some of these guys on just coastal tiles with, with three or four coastal tiles, you get breathtaking, uh, maybe some trees around, and you're going to have really fantastic campuses, theater squares, whatever, um, commercial hubs, just by putting them out uh, in locations where you got really nice appeal. So... Really, really powerful. Good stuff. The digger, meh. Uh, modern era unit, military unit, is not terrible, but not really all that relevant in pretty much any game you're ever going to play. And the fact that it comes so late can be a little frustrating because that's by the time you get that late, the era score from building it is kind of less irrelevant, uh, less relevant, I should say. So, not the greatest, but whatever. And then the outback station, one of the best, definitely the best, one of the best five. Maybe one of the best three or four 
tower improvements. Any tower improvement that gives you production is fantastic. And once you get late in the game and get all the techs required, uh, you can have some really, really fantastic outback stations with lots of food and lots of production. So they're lots of fun as well. So really good all around sieve. Uh, pretty good synergies all around. Really a lot of fun. So let's play them. Let's do it. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and settle our city and start talking strats. First to find it, first to settle it, six points. Let's go. Curtain was your first deity win, Bard? Oh, he's so good. He's a lot of fun. He's, he's definitely somebody you should want to play if you're trying to get some higher level of victories. Granty! Good afternoon. How you doing, Granty? Awesome to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, so I'm going to... There's a river here. I'm going to head towards this river. Try and follow that river up here. And always trying to follow rivers because you generally want to settle on rivers. So that's where you're going to find your next settle places. Uh, we are going to go scout first. And what I'm going to do is... So automatically, the game is auto-choosing this tower right here. Because the yields are so good. Alright. But if you do that... You're going to grow pretty fast, definitely. But it's you're gonna, production is going to be terrible. Now, you are getting the faith and culture, which is great. But what I would rather do is get the scout out in half the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lock in the 3-2 tile. You're going to lose the faith and culture, but you're going to gain some production. And you're going to build yourself the scout a lot faster. And then once you get to 2 pop, then you can choose to work this tile... And your production is not going to go up, which is going to be a little bit of a stunt uh, to your growth and your and your overall abilities. But you will you will start to gain that culture and faith, and then you can start to plan out when are you going to grow in population? Do I want to get to a pop three before I use it? Maybe I use one of them and then get to pop four and then use another one. We of course have a two three tile out here that we're going to want to get to for production. Um, that will be a nice counteraction to this. If you can work both this tile and this tile, you're getting the high food, no production, with the food and high production to counteract it. There's some other tiles out here that we're going to want to get to that have some nice high yields as well. And then the higher your, like, the higher your population gets, the more of these tiles you can use. Because obviously, to faith, to culture, to faith, to culture, to faith, to culture, it'd be fantastic to be working all these tiles. But if you have pop three and you're working those three tiles, not only are you not going to grow, but you're not going to get anything produced. So balancing those will be the decisions that we make throughout the game. Druid, good day to you. How you doing? Fantastic to see you as always. <laughs> good day, Gerber. <laughs> Troxler to Gerber. The old GT meme. That was good stuff on the uh, Twitters. Once you get the two pop, you can't stop. <laughs> Map editor, <laughs> Seb. You're gonna need to watch. You you're gonna need to watch the first half of the stream or the first half hour of the stream. I actually did a little bit of a tutorial, just very briefly going over some of the steps, uh, not specific. I have never made an actual tutorial for it. So horseback riding is probably gonna be our choice, I do believe, because we have uh, sorry horseback riding animal husbandry. I'm looking at the horse. Animal husbandry is going to be our choice because we want to be able to improve this as soon as possible for extra gold. And we also have uh, a honey resource and another animal husbandry requirement on this fur as well. So that's going to be the first things we want to get to, not to mention the sheep out here and stuff. So we have lots of things we can do with animal husbandry. So that will be our first choice in hopes of finding an early, you know what, goody hut. <laughs> First half of the stream. You, sir, are baked. If you think that I'm making commands that readily. First half. <laughs> Fine, first hour, Moondoggy, all right? Sorry for accommodating the, the wishes of chat. Somebody, somebody, somebody tried to tell me that chat was always right once, and I thought they were crazy, but they were serious. Then I knew they were crazy. Um, bunch of animals in chat. I'm not sure what's confusing, Zeb. 
Free Builder! Oh my god. When that happens... Hype in chat, folks. Are you kidding me? Let's go. We're gonna make this farm. That's gonna be a five food farm tile. When we get animal husbandry, we'll hit this up. That's gonna be fantastic. Oh my god. It's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful thing. Good time watching as always. Absolutely. Good time watching you as always. Moondoggy agrees as well. How can you not? So again, we're working it. We're working it. Boom, bada bing, bang, boom. Gonna make that farm. Get the irrigation boost. That five food tile is beautiful. I would actually, we're gonna look at the numbers. I would actually consider working both of these tiles over this. Just because this five food is so potent for uh, getting to pop three very, very quickly. And once you're to pop three, that becomes much more comfortable to work the extra tile. Uh, continue right here. Oh, Kumasi is in the game. A somewhat close by neighbor. Kumasi, good to see you. Now, of course, remember, for those of you who haven't been paying very close attention since the update, they have changed the outputs from envoys with city states. So that's one culture in the capital instead of two, as you can see here. And it also includes one capital in your amphitheaters. And then the next stage at three is two culture in your museums. And then the stage after that is three culture in your broadcast centers, as well as the chancery building. So not as first meets are not nearly as potent early on as they were. What a start indeed. With four camps in cap, uh, and that I read, do you take uh, camps in Um It's something to consider. Uh, the deer will be chopped for settlers, almost certainly. So at that point, you'd be looking at three camps. I, if I saw more camps, I have elephants as well, apparently, on the uh, island. So we'll, we'll take a look. Not impossible to take camps Pantheon, but it's not a very strong one in general, so I it, I probably shy away from it. To be entirely honest. So we're up to pop two. Again, we have to make this decision. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock this in and see what it what it looks like. So this is this means if we get to pop three in four turns, then we're working both of these and this. And we've got that extra population, we can just keep growing. But if we can get to pop three. Work all three of these tiles and then pop four, pop five by just working these high, high, high food tiles. So if you don't lock this in, then it's an extra two turns uh, to grow. Isn't a lot more. You give up four turns of that for an extra two pop. I think the calculation to me is you keep it on here. The extra, the extra yields to me is worth losing two turns to your next growth um if this was if this wasn't a three food if this is like a one food or or was one of those tiles for instance or like this then the answer would be no because if you're locked in here it would take you we would be looking at 21 turns for growth which is like a massive amount of time obviously but i think you i think you stick with this take the culture and faith and and live with the extra two turns of growth. That's that's the balancing act of deciding, right? Do we do the five food or do we not? This is nice, but the extra two food per turn is only going to get us two turns. My opinion, not worth. An elephant, an elephant's Joey stays in the pouch for three years. I did not know that. I, I was pretty sure um, that they stayed in there a long time. Uh. The, the kangaroos, that is. Uh, I didn't know it was three years. Now I'm just getting trolled. As you guys know, I, I do not like to venture off with my warrior too far. I could have headed up that way to see what was going on. But we do not want to waste a bunch of time a long ways from our capital. We, uh, we look for a barb camp at some point soon, and we just explore the area. Our scout pops next turn. Work the sand dunes, in your opinion. Let's do it. Uh, now here, we're three turns away, and then we can work this. Then we'll, we can get into mining, and we could work that. We could also build a quarry at some point. 
or work with the luxury. Lots of different options going forward. Now, as you know, it's straight into Settler. But this is a 15 turn Settler, which is not great. At this point, you have to start deciding. You're going to be deciding, okay, we, we grow in five turns, but do we go to the five, five food tile or not? Or is this going to make go here? Does it go here? This would be a tile you really want to work. Do you buy this tile and lock it in at three pop? I think you might. Next turn, we can make the choice to buy the three production tile to lock in with these guys and work the three of those at pop three, which would um, which would get us a much better result on this other time. Or less is more. They can do sand sliding, happy families. Uh, I don't know. Is uh, is sand sliding something that the, the families are doing these days? I don't know. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. So what we can do is we can make the choice to buy this now because it'll be 50 gold. It might be it might go up to 55 by the time we get around to using it. So you just go ahead and buy it because it's not going to go there. It's going to go uh, almost definitely here. It could even go there. The odds of it going to the 2-3 are slim. So we go like this. And I'm going to continue to work. Yeah, I'm going to continue to work this because the extra food, we'll get it. we're four turns away, then we can work both, and this number will trim down dramatically. We have ourselves a little peninsula out here, like that. More elephants down here. We are, of course, working a lot of faith, so our, our pantheon choice is going to come in quick. And, of course, we're working a lot of culture, so code of laws on turn nine. Next turn, we are going to wait... Two more turns. Make it one more turn on animal husbandry. In here, I'm gonna go survey. We haven't seen any barbs yet. I loved, I love to rank up my uh, my recon units early whenever I get a chance, and then we flip this out if we have to. Working extra culture early also means that we'll be able to flip uh, our our um, policies a lot more soon, or a lot more often, I should say, because you're gonna get through the the the, uh, the things quick. And then uh, we have a couple of options here. First, we could go with Faith to get through our Pantheon sooner, but we're already working two Faith. What we actually need is a little bit of production to help us out because we are working a tile that gives us no production, but the Faith that we would get from Rock King. So this is the choice here, Urban Planning. Often God King is the choice if you're not having any other Faith generation. In this case, we do. Production is the way to go. Those are your choices all day long. One more turn here, like I said, and then we're moving and grooving. Move down here. There is a goodie hut. Just like that. Try to step on hills when we can. Just to clear this area to the south. You are going to move there next turn. As far as civics go, we're going to want to start up here. We are going to get the tile improvements uh, completed quite easily in there. And second continent. On, on a map like this, second continent is going to be tricky. Because we're playing on a small continents. And so they're, everything's kind of separated. It's not like you're on a, on a Pangea or even a continent's map where you might just run into a, a mountain set or like just a continent break and step over. On an islandy, con small continents kind of thing, you're unlikely to find another continent. And you just have to be willing to accept that. You might find one, luckily, just there might be an island close by that just happens to be part of another set. But it would be an, a rare instance. So we're going to pop our thing here. That's going to give us even more housing. Not that we need it. Because we have fresh water and the plus three coastal city boast. Two turns on growth to the two three. Like I said. And uh, we just added a couple more gold. In addition to the housing. This builder. What we can do is we can decide. Uh, probably we could work. We could work that tile for extra production. And then these two kind of counteract each other. One's got the food, one's got the production. But we're probably going to want to work these three here. And then maybe into the growth anyway. We could throw a camp on that, but it's just it's just some gold for sure. We could work the uh, the bees, I think, is probably the best choice. Uh, to be honest with you. Because if we ever found somebody, we could sell a, re a luxury early. 
Look at all those camps. They rarely stick the Pantheon. Yeah, we'll take a look. We could take a look at it. I'll take a look at it. I'm always open to trying new things, particularly in our, uh, uh, particularly in our Wonder Start series. I like to try new things, figure things out. Camps. We got some uh, elephants, obviously, and honey. A lot of lot of luxury camps. So it's a thought. It's a thought. I'm not gonna count it out. Um. I'm going to go into mining for the gypsum. And that should work. That should work. One one of the uh, things I always talk about when, I'm, when I talk about selecting a Pantheon, that's good to see, is I always try to discuss the idea of, is it going to help me right now, right? Because early is always best. I always say this. Er, the earlier you're getting benefit, the better in any game because something that's helping you from turn 100 on is nice but something that's helping you from turn 25 or 30 onwards that's a lot of turns that just compounds itself right that that extra food means you're going to grow fast like if you take a pantheon that gives you food for instance it's going to grow faster you're going to grow faster you're going to produce you work more tiles faster you work more tiles faster you're going to produce districts and other things faster and you compound from an early point it's going to stack up to much more great things by turn 100 than if it had happened from 100 on. So for Pantheons, I often say, is it helping me right now? There are some instances, like for instance, Faith from uh, the Appeal, the... Um, what the heck's it called? Earth Goddess. Uh, sorry, Earth Goddess is great but sometimes it takes a while for it to kick in because you have to get rid of your marshes and your jungles and sometimes you're not on the coast as much but you're going to get to the coast so maybe some of your cities later on might have appeal but you're going to have to wait to get there so you have to decide okay if i take that it might not be worth it right now but maybe it's worth it later but it might be turn 80 or 100 before it kicks in and is really giving us lots of faith at that point is the faith as valuable as if we could have had it earlier when we could have used it in the monumentality run or something like that so yes earth goddess uh brain fart you guys know me i'm old i i i i forget stuff norm just sugar crashed insta crash right there all right we want a another scout oh I'll take 40 gold I'll take 40 gold we'll step out here to see what's going on not too shabby. If we got rid of, just as an example of his ability, one, two, three, four positive appeal with the ocean tiles and the mountain and the one negative here. So if we were to get rid of this, a campus or anything, a theater square, anything could go here and get a plus three adjacency um, by having the, you have to get rid of that first and then you're good to go. Now it also means you wouldn't be able to mine this because it's a hill as well. So you'd have to get rid of it and just have a bad tile there, essentially. Um, but you could use it there and then put trees there a long time. Uh, Geroid P. Thank you very much for the follow. Shoes of the door. Make yourself at home. You know the drill. Or if you don't, you're certainly going to learn it. So we got a bit of a mountain range here through this desert. Cutting us up. Do, 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 You're going here, working another camp. That's a bunch more gold. We are now at pop three. I'm going to lock in the two, three for production. So you can see here the difference. So we're growth in 14. And then six turns to settler. Growth in seven. Settler in six. So it's actually not going to speed us up on settler time. Now we could actually, no, that's going to speed, that's going to slow, getting rid of this is a bad idea because we have the growth. We could, we could do a couple of other things. We could, we could lock this in and jump back away from the faith and culture to grab one extra food and some gold. You can grab the food. I think ultimately though, this tile is too powerful with the extra food on it. You want to keep running that. 
Um, one extra food is not going to be worth all that faith and culture. And then you want to run the production to speed up your settler, obviously. Um, and get your get your growth. If you're working this tile, your growth is getting murdered. Now, we're going to drop in population bef just before we get that settler. or Sorry, just before we grow in population. But because we're working the food, we'll get right back to population 3 immediately. Whereas if we were working that other tile... We would drop in population to two, and it would be a few more turns again to get back to population three. This way, it'll be like, settler drops us, and then growth will go right back to three immediately. And then, you, you know, then you can start keep your momentum on. So, that's what you want to run there. Uh, we'll tell you, is it even possible to lose the, the game on normal difficulty if you're honestly playing it? Uh, if, you, if you're brand new to the game, or don't understand the basics absolutely um if you know the game and you're you understand it and you're playing it honestly yeah you, it's pretty easy to win on normal difficulty um and that's true too like you can religious victories if you're not paying attention it is possible uh if the AI isn't paying attention to one another, one sieve could overwhelm the others and, and get a religious victory on you, sneak it in the back door, so to speak. But it's pretty rare. Pretty rare. Papega Jack, I don't understand what that is. You almost always turn religious off. No, I don't turn any victory conditions off unless it's a specific victory, uh, like a specific playthrough. So we're coming across here in one turn. Aquadome, thanks for being here. In one turn, I will... Um... I will uh, change the gra the craftsmanship to uh, uh, uh sorry words are hard when I get this in one turn I will change my government policies to have the extra strength against the barbarians that's what I was trying to say words, words are hard so there's our discipline we'll keep production on confirm policy now when we get over here, we'll be in good shape. Some floodplains over here. So potential city here, potential city in here, potential city here. Another river down here you could put something on. City in the north. Districting is going to be interesting with this map. Maybe districting on this river for some commercial hubs. Maybe a city over in here on this. Maybe here, I don't know. Something like that. Some initial ideas anyway. So we're jumping in here. We're probably gonna have to hard tech that, but not a big deal. We are working pretty good culture right now. Can't complain too much there. Well, yes. If you've been playing, if you've been playing civilization games uh, for two decades, then probably pretty hard to lose on noble difficulty. I I would concur with that statement, one hundred percent. I will not argue with that take at all. An interesting idea would be to start with the perfect Australia start. The perfect Australia, the perfect Australia start. About to do a twenty-four hour. Uh... I'm gonna do it. Reading Dune, you just won two hundred fifty dollars. I'm not, I'm not sure how any of that adds up. Aquadome? Yeah, 
Nice industrial next to the two quarries. Uh, I don't build industrial zones, Doomed. You know that. Don't be crazy. Plus, those stone will get eaten into settlers, guaranteed. Pamukkale and Reefs. Two, oh, double-digit campuses. Oh, yeah, that would be interesting for sure. Just do all the overpowering things. Aquadome just got slapped. What did you do, Aquadome? Aquadome, thank you very much for the 100 biddies. I don't know what you were trying to link there, bud. Who deserves more credit than the wife of a coal miner? Uh, good roll. Not a good roll. Probably have to heal for a turn or two. Let's pop in here. I'm trying to learn this. Yeah, you could if you if you set things up, you could start to make some ridiculous campuses, and then with Australia, even better, no doubt about it. <clears throat> yeah, we'll get into there, I think. That's good. I'm sure you'll play Chexy. Chess with dice. Dune 2000 stuck in my childhood memory because it's too much for my PC to run. Oh, it's too much. Oh, at the time. Just was one of my last game as Victoria to get to Venetian and ended up going for a science victory anyways. Hermetic order stinks. Uh, they are win more. Uh, they are a win more society, not a help you win one. I haven't tried them out yet. Well, I'm, I'll have to be finding that out for myself. Uh, I'm looking forward to using them and learning about them, just like I did with the uh, vampires. Which, by the way, the vampires turned out. Pretty, pretty sweet. We're going to run the monument in here now. We're locked in on the three tiles we want, which is good. We have our settler. Now, this is the point at which you got to decide where you want your second city. And putting a second city down here somewhere where you could jump into some of these culture tiles. Like maybe you settle the copper. And you could, you'd have a good start. There's a lot of good tiles around. Maybe a little rough. Well, no, get the honey. I was going to say a little rough on food, but you got the honey. A couple two twos. You got a one four here. So settle the copper. And you could grow into grabbing one of these tiles. You get the pop three, pop four. You could grab one or two of these tiles and, and start to take advantage of that. Long term, you're going to probably want a Petra Capital, which is rare. We uh, we rarely do a Petra Capital, but we probably jump into a Petra Capital and run all of these tiles like that. But for now, we're gonna uh, we're gonna head to the Copper, I think. I think we're gonna head to the Copper. You had a Pentium with a 74 megahertz. You couldn't run the super advanced game. That's that is feels bad. If ever there was one. All right, it's time to choose a pantheon. Time to choose a pantheon. We have one, two, three camps in the capital. We will have one, two. I suppose three camps, but third ring. Oh, we'll count stuff in the second ring more. Uh, but up to three here. That's six. We got seven. Uh, you could go say eight, but deer we eat. So eight, nine. We're currently looking at nine, but our continent as a whole is also going to probably continue to have more furs, honey. So we have nine right now. It'll help us right now. Let's take a look at it compared to any other options. Right now. Uh, so here it is. Goddess of the Hunt. Food and production from camps. One food. Whatever. This has gotten much better. 
It used to be what? Just It just used to be one food to, to camps, right? Which made it unplayable. So one food, one production to camp. So instantly, right out of the gate, this become these become this becomes a five one with two gold. This becomes a four two with three gold. Um, this would also become the same as this, but very good. We could have a camp here for a while at least, which would be extra food and production. Make some really fantastic tiles, immediately helping us a lot. So there's a lot to be said for food and production. All right. Uh, other options could be. Uh, what do we got for pastures? Not much in the way of pastures. We have some sheep around, I suppose. Although you might want to eat the, some of the sheep for population and mine the hills. So unlikely. On pastures, certainly not. Uh, certainly not a major desire to go with plantations, obviously. There's always the option, if it's there, for going for Settler, I think is a reasonable idea. I do not believe I see it here. Free Builder, where is it? Oh, there is actually. Religious Settlements is there. So you could take the Free Builder right now get a third city real quick. I like that idea a lot of the times it's available. Getting a third city instantly, just like that, for free, right at the beginning of the game, is a very significant development and it's something that you should definitely consider all the time when it's there it might not seem like much because you get the settler then it's over but that city is going to grow from now for free for the entire game and everything that city does will be done that much faster than if you'd waited to get that settler uh through buying it with faith or whatever so that, that's that's the other contender i would say right now another contender on top of all of that is appeal goddess and as you can see Pretty early on, we'd be looking at a fair amount of faith. You'd be looking at a fair amount of faith generation in here. You'd have, be obviously looking at some faith up through here. Now, likely, no districting really here to be done. Uh, no districting, obviously, here to be done. So districting is a little bit weird with Australia, because often send, you'll be putting stuff out on the points here for... Really nice campuses and stuff like that here. We'll be able to do the same kind of thing in here. So you're going to lose a lot of these tiles. Appeal-wise. Um, we do have the breathtaking here. Hmm. So that's a lot of faith. That's a lot of extra faith here as well. And as we know, faith generation is extremely nice for a monumentality run, especially when you don't have a ton of chops in your capital. You're gonna to want to buy. So that's that's something. Yeah, I counted the elephants. Doomed. I did indeed count the elephants. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three. I counted here. I counted the ones up there as well. So it's not an easy choice. I think the settlers probably out because the other two options are so strong. My first instinct is to take the appeal. That's a lot of faith generation. We'll be able to continue to generate faith throughout the game. But I think for Australia, since we're probably going to eat up a fair amount of appeal tiles with our districts, it will overall in the future, like over the course of the game, be less valuable than it would be if you were playing somebody else. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of a an orthodox chance i'm not sure maybe i've chosen it once or twice i think i chose it three or four weeks ago i grabbed it but we're gonna go ahead and grab goddess of the hunt and we're immediately going to get a lot of benefit on food and production first to a pantheon we're one short of normal age we're going to want to push for a golden immediately fantastic tiles here and here Oops. At pop three, at this point, it's probably worth considering jumping to this. Five and five versus eleven and four. I like I like sorry, three and six. Oh that was okay, that was this here and there. Okay. I like this here. A lot a lot of growth. A little bit extra production. So that's like a, that's working like a five two four two here with tons of gold, and then no production here, but the extra food as well. I like this a lot. We're gonna get to pop three here. 
or pop four here in three turns. And then we could turn around and run this. We got a builder on here. This is going to be a three, four tile with gold. Uh, a lot of a lot of benefit very early in the game, food and production wise, is going to be a really big benefit to us. We're going to like that a lot. I think that's I think that was a really good choice. So I do. Granada first meet on Granada. We got some more elephants in here as well. The first meet on Granada is going to meet extra production towards units in the capital. Only one extra production, of course. Because uh, plus one production in the capital when they're producing uh, and in every city with barracks when producing units. So that it helps a little bit, but it's not the plus two you used to get. So they've, they've kind of balanced out that progression. Uh, out of curiosity, when are you going to uh, forfeit this game? Uh, not a religion. If, that, if you're asking if I'm going to get for a religion, uh, I will not be going for a religion. If that's what you're asking, but always looking for faith generation. Uh, is it worth pushing faith if you plan on going science so no. uh, Generally speaking, the optimal play is not to get a religion. Again, if you're asking about getting a religion versus faith. Any faith generation can be amazing. In a monumentality run, faith is amazing. In a culture game, there's lots of ways to use faith. Obviously with uh, late game, getting national parks and rock bands. Faith generation, always a nice thing to aim for. But getting a religion, it is not optimal. Particularly in higher difficulties where um, where you, it's the beginning of the game is so crucial and spending so much extra commitment that you need to to get it. Because the AI goes for religion so fast on deity that you have to go immediately for a religious site and then another religious site and then do prayers and spend the first 35 turns of the game intensely focused on making sure you get a religion. And then you're way, way, way behind and the benefit of that religion is not going to make up for that much loss at the beginning of the game most of the time. There are some cases where there's civilizations who are much better at acquiring a, a religion. Or they can you could go like, you know, with a particular pantheon with, with the now very powerful um, work ethic, which can help pay back really quickly. But in a lot of cases for most civilizations on deity on high difficulty levels, not worth it. <clears throat> uh, no, they don't, Giroid. So Australia being in Uluru don't get a special benefit just because Uluru is actually in Australia. It doesn't make any difference. It's the same for everybody. And yes, Granada stacks very well with high appeal. But that actually goes against Australia because it's not that Australia gets better high appeal than other civs. It's that they can use high appeal better than other civs because of their districts. So in reality... It actually mixes with Australia worse, much like Earth Goddess does, because you're going to want to use the tiles that have really high appeal for your districts and not for, for instance, um, your, uh, what's the name of that tile improvement? The uh, Alcazar, which it could be really cool. You can get like two culture, two science tiles. We'll find ways to get them down here, hopefully some at some point, you know. Uh, maybe we could throw one in. Oh, no, that wouldn't be. I was thinking that was four uh, mountains, but it's only three. If you can find places where you can get the two, the two science, two culture, or even the one, throwing some in in the desert here would actually not be a bad idea. You might find a couple spots here and there, but normally you wouldn't be putting districts out here as any other sieve, right? As if you were playing as any other sieve, you wouldn't be putting districts out here. So you could throw an Alcazar right there, and boom, just like that, you've got you've got a Two culture, three science. And Bob's your uncle. You're loving it. So, yeah. There you go. That's been 44 minutes. Time flies when you can't stop talking. I'm going to call it there for the end of episode one. Twitch, don't go anywhere. YouTube, it's Uluru. It's Australia. We're doing Australia things. I hope you're enjoying it so far. I'm really happy with our choice of Pantheon. It's going to make us real strong in the capital and in a number of these other cities. Can help us ramp up really, really nice. We're ready to hit this guy again, I think. Let's go. Not bad. We'll grab our promotion, finish him off. Okay. We just took 37 damage to his 29, and we were favored to win that. That was a bad roll. Anyway, if you're enjoying these series, do not forget to like all the videos so that everybody on YouTube can find them. I do so much appreciate it. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.